In this video, we're going to take a look at exam revision for data collection and sampling. So what we're going to do here is just run through three exam style questions. So if we move on to the first question here, what we're told is a manufacturer of light bulbs is testing the durability of their new light bulb model. The manufacturer uses a machine that turns the light bulbs on and off until they break. So part A here just asks us to explain what is meant by census. Now it doesn't ask us to explain in the context of this question here, so we're going to give the generic definition. So a census, let's just write this down here. So a census observes or measures, so observes measures, whichever you prefer, I'll write them both down here. So it observes or measures every member of a population. We jot that down here, and there we have it. So that's all we need to say for that one. It just gets one mark there. We don't need to worry about that too much, but that's all we need to put for part A there. Now for part B, it says give one reason why the manufacturer should use a sample rather than a census to test the durability of the light bulbs. And part A kind of gives you the answer essentially, because if you think about this, if we use a census here to test the light bulbs, that means we're going to test every light bulb um, that we have in stock. But obviously, if we're testing to the point that we destroy the light bulbs until they break, then that wouldn't make sense um, because we don't want to break all our stock there. We've got nothing left to sell. So in that case, all we need to say here is a census. So a census would destroy all stock or destroy all light bulbs, whichever you prefer. We'll say it destroys all light bulbs. and would leave no stock. Okay. We say it leaves no stock to sell, and therefore use a sample instead. Okay. And that's all we need to say there for part B. But you can see, a lot of this chapter is basically definitions and just thinking about the context of the question. Obviously, you won't want to use a sensor there, like we said, because it would destroy all the light bulbs, and as a result, we'd have no stock to sell there. Okay, so there we have it. So that's our solution to question one. Moving on to question two here, what we've got now is a takeaway that wants to find out what their customers think to a new menu that they are due to launch and they decide to perform a survey. Now, the takeaway asks the first 25 customers that order food on a particular day to complete the survey. So for part A, we just need to name this sampling technique. So there's two names we can go by for this sampling technique here. The most common I'd say is opportunity sampling. So opportunity sampling. So opportunity sampling, but the other name that you might know this by is convenience sampling, okay? You don't need to give both, they are the same thing, but whichever you know it by, okay? So convenience sampling. Convenience sampling, I might have spelled something incorrect here. I'm not very good at English, but there we go. So that's our solution there. Okay, so that's our solution to part A. For part B then we're asked to identify one advantage and one disadvantage to this sampling technique. So what can we say here for our advantage and our disadvantage? So if we look at the advantage first, so advantage here. So for our advantage here to opportunity sampling, again, refer back to the previous video where we had a look at an introduction to sampling, because we did list the advantages and disadvantages to each sampling technique. So what we can say here is it's very easy to select the sample. Obviously, we're just asking the first 25 customers, then it's really easy to perform that sample. Okay, so easy to perform the sample. That's all we need to really say there. It's very easy to perform the sample, something along them lines. So we now need a disadvantage. So disadvantage here, what can we say? So again, refer back to the previous video. In this case, what I'd say is it can introduce bias. Okay, something along them lines. So can introduce bias. And there we have it. So we've got one advantage, one disadvantage, and that gives us our solution to question two. To finish with here, let's take a look at one more question. So what I've got now is a sixth form college which decides to survey students' opinions on a particular group of subjects. Now what we've got here is a number of students that are studying each particular subject, and then we've got the subjects given here. 
Now we're told that each student is only allowed to study one subject from the list above. So all that's saying there is there's no overlap between um, the subject and the number of students that are studying that, that subject. Okay. So for part A, we just asked to give one advantage and one disadvantage to carrying out the survey using a stratified sample. So again, you just need to refer to the previous video if you're not too sure about the advantages and disadvantages here. So I begin with the advantage by a stratified sample. Then what I say here for the advantage is that it's representative of the whole population. Okay, so representative, representative of whole population. Okay. So that's what I'm going to say there for my advantage to a stratified sample. So what about a disadvantage now, if I do that up here? Go for a disadvantage. Then what I can say here is that it can be difficult with large populations. So difficult, difficult, um, difficult with large populations. Okay. Now, obviously, there is a few other things you could have said here instead, but that's absolutely fine. Any of those um, advantages that we listed in the previous video, any of the disadvantages here will get your mark. Okay, so that's the solution to part A. So what about part B now? So we're told that the college here decides to take a stratified sample of 50 students. So what we want to do then is find the number of students to be sampled from each subject. So let's begin with the top subjects here, so maths. So what I, what I want to do here is find how many uh, math students will be in the stratified sample. Now, the first thing you need to do here for a stratified sample is find out the total number of students. So we're not given that in the context of the question anywhere, so I need to evaluate that myself. So I just need to add the total number of students here together. So 210 plus 120 plus 70 plus 100. And if you do that here, what you should get is 500. Okay. So we know in total there's 500 students here. So how many math students is there out of that total of 500? Well, there's going to be 210 out of 500. And what I do now is I times that by the sample size. In this case, the sample size will be 50. So 210 over 500 times that by 50. And just put that into your calculator. And what I get here is 21. Okay, so we're going to have 21 math students within the sample. Do the same now for biology, chemistry, and physics. So for biology, like we said, we're just going to replicate that here. So for biology, we've got 120 biology students. That will be out of the total again, which is just 500. And again, we just, time, we just times that by the sample size. So times that by 50. Again, just put this into your calculator. And what I get here is 12. Okay. Again, just keep repeating this now. So for chemistry, we've got 70 students. We've got 70 students. We've got 500 in total. Times it by 50. And what this gives me here is 7. And then finally, we've got physics here. So for physics, we've got 100 students out of 500. We times that by 50. And what I get then here is 10 students. Okay. A quick way just to double check your solution here is obviously the individual subjects, so the number of students that we're selecting here for our sample. That should add up to the total sample size. So 21 plus 12 plus 7 plus 10 does add up to 50. So it seems sensible. You can always use that as a quick check. Obviously, if your numbers don't add up to the total sample size, then just double check what you've done there in your um, working just before that. Okay. And there we have it. So that's the total number of students from each subject that will be sampled for a stratified sample there. Okay. And that gives us the solution to question three. And that brings us to the end of this video on exam revision for data collection and sampling. In the next video, we're going to take a look at an introduction to, or maybe not an introduction, but we're going to take a look at measures of location and spread.